Hey guys and girls, and welcome back to another video for Flashpoint, which is the uh, the new living story that has been added to Guild Wars 2. Today we are doing Heart of the Volcano, which is the second and final instance of um, of the actual episode. It's a very short episode, <laughs> we'll just say that. Um, but this time we are inside a volcano and uh, we're coming to find Lazarus who is nicked off with um, Timey's machine which is uh, fashioned off of Omad's machine which we found out about in season one I think, I think it was season one um, which basically connects to the eternal alchemy and we see the dragon's essence within the eternal alchemy and the effect that they have on Tyria and all that malarkey so we see here's Timey she's back and helping us and Scruffy 2.0 looking pretty swish Kinda like that. The only uh, downside would be that uh, when Timey's talking, she's she's doing a very good ventriloquist act. She, her mouth isn't moving. <laughs> but you know, finickety finickety. Anyway, so in the um, the first episode that I did, which was Timey's pet project, I discussed um, various different achievements and whatnot. Um, and one of the achievements that I mentioned was in here. Um, it's the gliding one, it's called uh, Fancy Flying, uh, not to be confused with Flight Fancy, which is one with where you fight Mordremoth, so it's, it's all very confusing. Um, but basically, once you get past this first stage, you'll fly down and there'll be lots of destroyers and they'll be flinging green shit at you. Um, and basically you have to avoid it all. Well, this can be done very easily. All you have to do is have one friend who basically opens the instance for you and you just stand right about here or in the cave at the start, doesn't matter and they've basically got to go down and do all of that bit up to the part where you find Balthazar and you don't get hit once, you get the achievement hopefully they'll be good enough not to get hit as well but you know, sometimes shit happens doesn't it so um, I did actually, on this one, I did actually manage to do it um, completely unintentionally <laughs> but I did actually manage to do it uh, without getting hit so it is possible it is doable um, it's not too difficult um, but equally it can be quite irritating if you do it uh, or you try to do it and then you fail so you've got to start the instance all over again the I think the worst part of any instance is listening to all of the verbal diarrhea they've got going on you know all the NPCs chatter 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 and you've got to wait until they finish what they're saying before you can move on so it can be quite irritating in that respect if you fail so foolproof way of doing it is just get someone else to do it for you and then you can flip reverse and just do it for them you know you monkey see monkey do and all that um, so that's it um, in this instance you are given a scanner by timey um, and there is an achievement attached to that where you've got to scan everything there is to be scanned uh, the majority of them you will get uh, from from the get-go um, scanning the the big bubble thing the anomaly uh, you'll get that. You need to scan a destroyer, you need to scan Timey and um, the dogs, you'll need to scan those. Um, and I think that is about all you need to scan. I think. Maybe the chains as well. Maybe. So anyway, um, once you've scanned all those you'll get an achievement. I'm sure there are plenty of other achievements. Uh, there is one more achievement that I will mention at the end um, that you can get uh, pretty easily. There's no no real trouble about it but this instance let's talk about this goddamn instance oh my god um so i had no preconceived ideas of what was going to happen um not when i recorded this because obviously as i say in the previous video i forgot to record all the game sounds so cinematics just kind of lose their their wow factor when there's no sound so yeah awkward um so yeah, so you, you go through this, you have to get through all this this crap with the with the chains and the anomaly that's blocking your path. So once you fall all the way down, I mean this is deep. This is a very very deep volcano, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, Time you refers to it as the chimney. Uh, that just reminds me of Mary Poppins. Go figure. Uh, <laughs> but, 
Um, so, yeah, you go through, and on this bit, the, the third gate, once you destroy, I think it's one of the chains, all the destroyers just drop dead. So, at that point, if you've not been hit, you'll see down in the corner, um, above your utility skills, you'll have um, the little emblem thing that says there is, a, there is an achievement to be gotten. So, if that disappears and you've been hit, if it doesn't disappear, then kudos, congratulations, you've just done the achievement. Good job. Um, so, yeah, uh, then you just need to break these chains down. And then we go into fighting good old Badazar, which is uh, interesting, to say the least. Um, most people, well, I say most people, there are quite a few people who didn't actually realise what was going on down there. Um, uh, particularly in my guild, they didn't quite grasp the concept. So as you fall down, you see that platform, that's where Balthazar is. And if you look there, that, right there, that is Primordus. Not even joking. That big ass thing right there, that's Primordus. You see the fire coming out of his nose and the lava dripping through his teeth. It's like, holy crap. And it does make me think, if he is that monumentally huge, how the hell did he only make a little bit of seismic activity going through Tyria? You would have thought it would be like catastrophic, things would be like collapsing in on themselves, you know, these huge craters, because he is huge, that's just the, the tip of his, of his schnoz, his, his little schnout. Um, so that, that was a bit like, uh, okay, I mean look, look how big he is, if that was just the tip of his mouth. Damn, son! <laughs> he could get from where he was, which was uh, pretty much next to where Jormag is. He, he only needed to take one step and he's on the Ring of Fire. He's, he's almost the size of Tyrioth, crying out loud. But anyway, that's a technicality. So anyway, you get uh, Timey, she comes down to you and helps you out. You've got a scan Omad's machine and these two things fly out, um, which is basically Dragon Essence, Dragon Magic. Um, and what Balthazar is doing here is he is draining the power from uh, Primordus to charge himself up. He is becoming more powerful. So just to go into a little bit of lore, there is a mention in within the, the little chatter when Balthazar says something, he, he drops a little subtle hint that, um, there you go, he won't stop his campaign and all that. There's a little hint there that I think something has gone on. I think something's happened with the gods where maybe they've stopped respecting him or he has tried to, you know, rise above them to become the, the best god. There's something gone on between him and the other gods. I'm pretty certain. So what he's done, he's come back to Tyrion and he's gone, you know what, if you won't respect me now, I'm going to go and get all this dragon magic, you know, the, the magic that you all ran away from, we all ran away from, um, in the beginning, I'm going to go and absorb all that power and then you will fear me. You, yeah, I will, I will own your ass. 1v1 me, bitch! You know, <laughs> kind of that sort of thing. Um, I don't know whether Lissa is in on this with her mirror and everything. Um, I, I'm going to say that Balthazar stole the mirror. I would imagine that that was one of Lissa's mirrors and he basically stole the mirror um, and used it to... I don't know why. That, why did he choose to come and disguise himself as Lazarus of all things? You know, he's, he's a god. You know, and it's quite it's quite ironic when I think back to um, to when oh, what's his name, Cordicus, uh, when he said, "You're a false god." I'm like, really? Because uh, <laughs> you know, Lazarus claiming he's a god. Yeah, okay, that is kind of false godish. But if he knew that he wasn't actually Lazarus, being as though we found the aspect of Lazarus in Cordicus's own manor in his bedroom, you think, well, did he know that he was Balthazar? Because, you know, saying you're a false god to Balthazar, I mean, uh, you couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> but yeah, I think something has gone on between the gods, which is why Balthazar has returned to Tyria. He's returned to get some 
some pretty epic powers. And the way he goes about this is with Omad's machine. Maybe he learnt about it. I mean, who knows when he learnt about it. Um, but he's found out about the machine and he's using it now to drain power from Primordus. I do think as well, because with this you get the sparks from both... Uh, the white sparks are... You get that blue dragon little thing above your utility skills. And then the red dragon one, which you need to kill off his, his hellhounds. So I'm thinking he's the Omad's machine is actually connected to Jormag in some way. So sort of using Primordus as a sort of proxy, if you like, a proxy server. So that what he's doing is he's draining the power from Primordus, but it's also draining from Jormag as well. And they do say at the end of this instance that perhaps, you know, this has affected Jormag as well. Which I have to wonder. Um, how Bran's going to take this. <laughs> you know, you wanted revenge on that dragon, you know, you wanted to kill dragons because one of them killed your mother and you're still a bit, you know, had to be bad and a bit, you know, a bit salty about that. Yeah, well, we just put that back to sleep, so, yeah. Just saying, you, you know. And telling him as well, oh, by the way, uh, we can't kill any more dragons. Word, isn't it? Ha <laughs> ha! Sorry, Bram. I know you're going to hate us for that one. So, I think he is going to go completely off the rails um, at some point. You know, when we when we get to that, he's going to go off the rails. He's not going to be happy about it. Whether he's going to turn against us and defy us by, you know what, I don't give a crap whether the dragon's asleep. I will kill it while it's asleep. You know, Bram may become a bit of a problem. So, I wouldn't be surprised if, we, uh, if we're going to have to fight Bram at some point. Whether Rocks will side with him, because they've got a bit of this, you know, this weird racial sort of love thing going on between them, which is a bit, you know, a bit weird, you know. They seem very close, uh, in a sort of Bates Motel kind of style. <laughs> it's, it's okay, but it's a bit wrong, you know, it's a bit... Yeah, I, I, I just have to wonder, what would a Norn slash Char child look like? Eek. So anyway, moving on. Um, so yeah, that's that's the whole thing that's going on at the moment. Balthazar is draining power to make himself more powerful, so I believe he can then take on the gods. Um, I think the story from here is going to take a huge turn, and we're not going to be fighting... The elder dragons anymore where this leaves bubbles or steve whatever you want to call him you know the 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 serpent uh, elder dragon the water elder dragon where that leaves that will we ever see it probably not at this point um the only i think the only reason we're going to see him is if uh, we have to go and put him back to sleep, which I think is going to be what's going to happen. So we're going to, I think we're going to systematically go round and put the Elder Dragons back to sleep. My only concern there, though, is that the Elder Dragons go round in this cycle, don't they? They they go to sleep, they wake up, they consume magics, and they go back to sleep because I think it's part of the, you know the ecosystem. This is this is what has to happen with Tyria is building all this magic and then the dragons bring it down until it's all back to normal you know back to a safe sort of you know yeah we can carry on now it's you know it's almost like filling up if you imagine magic as water and you're filling up a water balloon and if it keeps going and going 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 sooner or later it's gonna go you know what I mean so uh, we're coming up to a cinematic now um, so I will I will let you all watch that. That's the cinematic um, with Oman's machine going kablamo, which is um, interesting. But uh, yeah, I'll I'll come back to the whole dragons thing with with the magic. Um, I think that's the problem we're probably going to find next. But that's kind of where I think Tiny's going to come in. She may create a machine that can consume magic as well, sort of making a, a mechanical dragon, as it were. Yeah. So let's watch this cinematic.
And good night to Primordus. Whether the same thing has happened to Jormag or not, I don't know. We don't know because we haven't seen it. You know, seeing is believing. You know, if I can't touch it, it doesn't exist. Oxygen? What's that? Doesn't exist. Can't touch it. So, anyway. So, I think, um, yeah, back to what I was saying. I, I honestly think that Balthazar is here to take the power of the dragons, uh, what they've collected so far. So, it may last for quite some time because the dragons have managed to absorb quite a lot of energy. But, in the grand scheme of things, the dragons are part of Tyria. They... they are needed we know that now they consume the magic they keep the balance and if you keep filling a water balloon with water water balloon being Tyria and water being magic you keep filling it it's gonna go kablamo you know so I think that's why the dragons need to consume magic and Mordromoth said it himself when we when we stomped on his ass he, he didn't say, oh, you know, screw you guys, you, you complete arseholes, or, oh, no, I've been defeated, you know. He said, what have you done? What? What have we done? So it's kind of like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're kind of like, okay, what? What's what's the what's the problem? What's the dandelio? Yeah, I think he, he knew, okay, killing me is the biggest mistake you can ever make. And that is exactly what we did. We killed Zaitan. We've killed Mordromoth. And now the rest of the dragons are going to have to compensate by consuming more magic. By putting them to sleep, they're not going to be consuming magic anymore. So that's, you know, eek. But I, I do believe that once they've, um, once they've run out of magic, they've got to that space stage where they're like, okay, I need more magic, they're going to wake up again. So I think, you know, the whole, what, 250 odd years between Elder Dragons waking up will be a lot shorter. We'll put them to sleep in the short term, but they will come back a lot sooner because we've taken all their magic. Um, so the expansion, I I think that we're going to see Kraukatarik. I honestly do. Um, for the pure simple reason that I think Balthazar, now that he's, you know, sucked um, Primordus and Jormag dry, <laughs> I think he's going to go after Kralkatorik next. We know where Kralkatorik is, and we don't know where Bubbles is. So, that seems the most logical way to go. Now, we're going to have to communicate to Kralkatorik... You know, we we need to we need you to go back to sleep, or we need your help in defeating Balthazar. We don't mean you any harm. You know, we we realise now, we understand now that we can't kill you, so we want to help you. Please don't kill us. <laughs> so that's that's kind of what I think is going to happen next. The only problem is, how do we contact Kralgatorik? I mean, if only we had like one of his dragon minions sitting in Auric Basin to kind of communicate between us and oh wait <laughs> so you kind of see where the story's going logically that kind of makes the most sense to me we're going to be using or talking to Kraukatorik through Aurene and that's basically where we're going to go with the with the story so the expansion will be Kraukatorik um, and it's going to be saving the Elder Dragons which is going to be interesting whether Bram and Rox will be with us for that I don't know it's uh, it's a sticky situation, isn't it? But that's that's just my thoughts on it. So right now on the screen, you can see me gliding around, collecting all the orbs that have blown up outside of um, Omad's machine or Timey's machine, as it were. And um, this is an achievement. So after you've killed, um, well, say killed, after you've defeated Balthazar, you fly around and gather these orbs. And once you've got them all. Bing! You get an achievement. Of course, I didn't realise it was even an achievement. Um, but uh, the first time I did it, I just thought, oh, they're cool. I'm going to fly around and get those. And I did. And uh, Nick's helped me. And there you go. Bam. We, we, we did it. It was like, oh, an achievement. Fabulous. <laughs> so, yeah. Getting achievements for me at this point is uh, very nice because I've hit the 15k daily cap. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, um, you will know that you get 10 achievement points for every time you do a daily 
So you do three dailies and you get 10 achievement points for doing that. Uh, once you hit 15k achievement points for doing dailies, so that's, uh, I'm dead, um, so that's for both monthly, if you were playing the game back then when there were monthly achievements, um, and dailies combined, once that hits 15k you no longer get 10 achievement points for doing your daily. Um, I've kind of hit that, and yeah, getting achievement points is becoming a bit of a ball ache, so yeah. But anyway, that is it. So, um, if you do need any help with achievements, leave it in the comments below. I can help you do some, I'll do some videos on that. Or if you want to whisper me in game, you can get me at Koopziana.1802. Um, just drop me a whisper. More than happy to help out. Um, but that is it for today. Um, I'm hoping you enjoyed this video. Please leave your comments and all that shizzle down below. Share it with all your friends and family, you know. Um, and I will catch you next time when I'm going to discuss uh, the new map, uh, Draconis Mons, it is called, if I pronounced that right. If I didn't, <laughs> deal with it. No, but seriously. Um, yeah, I'm going to discuss my hatred and loathing for that map. So if you don't like people uh, bitching and moaning about stuff, I strongly recommend you don't watch it. Uh, not got much good to say about it. So I thought I'd put this video in because it's a nice happy one and very informative and everything and then leave the bombshell till the end. Ha <laughs> ha! I love you all with affections unspeakable. Goodbye.